Hello, I'm Eric Snodgrass, and thank you for watching this international forecast brought to you by Nutrient Ag Solutions. We step back and look here over the time period of May 9th through the 25th, and we're looking at satellite-derived precipitation. So again, this is satellite-based, which means it is not as accurate as gauges, it's not as accurate as radar, but it gives us global coverage. And I'd like to step you through several different places around the world here. We're going to start in South America, move over to parts of India and China, and we'll finish up with a bit on Europe. So during during this time period, I want to show you satellite drive precipitation. And at first glance, it may appear as though southern Brazil got a lot of rain as of late. But if we kind of zoom into that area, I want to illustrate a couple of things here. Now, where are we? This is Mato Grosso do Sul, and we're moving to Parna, Santa Catarina, and down to Rio Grande do Sul. Now, this area right in through here, I know it may not look significant to those that aren't from this area. But I basically just circled an area that's roughly the size of about three quarters of the size of Iowa. And we grow a lot of safrina crop in this section, northwestern Paraná and southeastern um, Mato Grosso do Sul. There were better rains to the north, as you can see here. But we were drier through parts of Goyas, Tocantins, Minas Gerais, Bahia, and then here in Mato Grosso. So this is not as though for this late planted crop we've had ideal rainfall. It has been scattered and convective. And, and that's this is the nature of what, what occurs here. Safrina crop... <clears throat> excuse me, safrina corn amount as you get farther to the south decreases substantially. The majority of it is in through this area and back into the east. And that's why, again, if I just give you another update on that two-month drought severity index uh, from the CHIRPS data set, we just continue to see that despite even some of the rains, where, where it really counts into this area, we've been you know near record dryness. And so we're continuing to see those same stresses as we go forward. As we look out over the next 10 days, this is the latest European model update. There is scattered storms moving into this area this weekend. But this, um, you know, the rain that could possibly be coming into that very dry region, again, it's going to be scattered in nature. And no, the European model cannot properly resolve that. It's not designed to resolve that. Uh, but we will be seeing some scattered precip into this region. But it, it's a scenario here where I believe that the rainfall is far too late to be doing any, allowing for any sort of substantial improvement of the crop. And then you notice that farther to the north, there is just a large donut hole here where the rest of the safrina crop is going to be missing out on a lot of precipitation. We're drier through Argentina uh, as well. So if we look at this and say next 10 days compared to normal, again, do you notice how the regions that are going to be above average, we just kind of zoom in here. Uh, it's not as though this is a widespread rainfall event where everybody gets rain into the north. It is much, much drier. So let's just let that kind of sit here for South America as we finish out the second growing season. From there, I'd like to take you a little bit farther to the east. And here we're looking at that same time period, May 9th through the 25th. And uh, just a couple of things to point out. In both the Arabian Sea and also in the Bay of Bengal, we have had two separate tropical systems come through here. And we've talked about these already and how they produced flooding in India. But speaking of flooding, from May 9th to May 25th, in parts of south and southeastern China, coming right here on the Yangtze River, it has been extremely wet. Many locations during this two, two plus week time period, picking up in, at least satellite derived in excess of, of a foot of rainfall. But I'm concerned about farther to the north, here in the North China Plain, back toward the Manchurian Plain, where as we do see some precipitation in that area, that CHIRPS data continues to show that on the two-month drought severity index, this is a region, and we grow a lot of corn and soybeans and other crops in this area, has been uh, quite dry. Now, in China, a lot of cotton is grown here. And to the south, it has been wetter, but to the north, it has been drier. So we've kind of split their cotton belt, at least this side of it, up as well in terms of some drought risk. This is something we got to watch very, very carefully moving forward to see if that drought continues, because that could certainly put some pressure on the uh, Chinese corn and soybean crop. From there, let's go take a quick look at Europe. And I want to start off here with the way that the temperatures have been uh, over the last 30 days. We've been cool throughout much of Europe overall and much warmer as you get over into the Russian wheat belt. But if we go from there, uh, let's also take a look at precipitation. So we're going to use the CPC gauge data over that same time period. And, and what you end up noticing here is that much of Europe has been quite, quite wet, including Ukraine and the Russian wheat belt here uh, bordering on, on Eastern Europe. So this is certainly going to 
be conducive to good early spring moisture return into this area. And as we look out there into the forecast over the next 15 days, we continue to see that Ukraine and this part of the Russian wheat belt is forecast to be wetter than normal, while the remainder of Europe does have a drier bias in, in the forecast. So this would point toward more favorable conditions for Ukraine and Russian you know, spring growing conditions. And we'll just kind of cap it off there and uh, leave that as our national update. And we'll talk to you again about it on Monday. I appreciate it. Thanks.